What is something that people are always getting wrong about you? That I'm a bitch. Hmm. I, think... I said, what do they get wrong about you? <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking interview is like, over. Yeah, yeah. What up, everybody? My name is Jade Fox, and this is the Jade Fox channel and new Jade Fox show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very excited because the series has been really a labor of love, and I'm so happy that it is sponsored by Be True Studios. Be True Studios is not only the official sponsor of The Jade Fox Show, but it is women founded and operated, which means it always smells good, there's always toilet paper, and there's always soap in the bathrooms. You know how we do. Here you'll find creative spaces where you can shoot your content, connect with like-minded folks, and as the name suggests, be true. Need somewhere to host your next event? Have a crochet panty party and no place to have it? Well, come on down to Be True Studios. Listen, maybe you need somewhere to shoot your next music video. Maybe you need somewhere to shoot that podcast episode. BTS is just one click away. So click the link in the description to learn more about Be True Studios and for booking. And remember the Be True motto, feel inspired, get creative, and be true. On with the show. He has a collective following of over 10 million across platforms, over 1 billion views, a true trailblazer in the world of content creation, making Dayton, Ohio, very proud, but features in Essence, BET, Jet Magazine, E! News, and more. Actor, writer, producer, singer, songwriter, designer, poet, philanthropist, clairvoyant, digital creator. And this last sentence, it means so much to me because it is just true. You cannot have a conversation about the legacy of digital media without mentioning Trey motherfucking Melvin. Thank you. Thank How are you, friend? You. I'm good. You good? I'm very good. I'm happy for it. Thank you. How Thank are you, you for coming. Hey, uh, look at it. The I was second be... you said, I said on yeah, yeah. my way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm so I proud of you. I gotta say, I'm sorry. I'm so fucking proud of you. This is beautiful. This is perfect. This is everything that we need, everything that we deserve. Black content creators, you know, they try to... Try to play with us. They try to play in our face. And they're value us. They, we, the, the white boys, they give it to them just nilly dilly. Give we us gotta raps. put in a little more work. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. If you said no, I would have understood. it. Literally in what? <laughs> because... World? Well, the thing about you that I've always appreciated is like, mm -hmm. you have always had this kind of, um, for those of you who have never had the pleasure of like meeting Trey in person, you have this regalness mm -hmm. to you. It's like, I, I, I'm somebody. Like you have that I'm somebody factor about you. Mm -hmm. And with people like you who know their worth and don't waste their fucking time, mm -hmm. like, you know, if something just isn't in the itinerary for the week, it's just, it is what it is. And so I just appreciate you being here. Well, one, thank you. But two, there's just always room in the itinerary for you. And for the people that I love, I love you. And we've been connected on a much, like, outside of content. We have, we've seen the lightest and the darkest parts of each other, you know, mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is, this is nothing. Yeah. But, it's absolutely nothing. I will always be here. I love you, friend. I love you more. Literally since like 2000, I think I moved here 2015. Either 15 or 16, because I moved here in 15. And I know I got my first place a couple months after. And I remember you, um, I don't know if you had moved here when you came, because I remember you being in my home. Mm -hmm. I remember you like coming in. <laughs> I remember you being at my home. Yeah, too much. I I'm weak. Too much. Oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Do you know that I got in regular arguments mm -hmm. with my ex about how often I'd be at your house? Multiple arguments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I will basically come. Because the thing is, if you go to Trey's house at a very regular time, let's say 8 p.m., you're not leaving till maybe five or 6 a.m. And it's not because you had like a meal and then you went to sleep and you decided to go home the next day. It's because 
This nigga would keep you up drinking vodka and whatever else, playing card games mm -hmm. for hours. And you always had no minimum than like, no less than like five people. No. Yeah. Yeah, no. Me and Kathy was up in there. Okay. Fuck up. <laughs> Hey, Leo Sis. <laughs> Leo Sis, shout out to Kathy. We love you. We miss you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. A time, though, like the, a really, really, really beautiful time. And I'm so grateful to have been able to experience that with you, with everybody, but, mm -hmm. but with you. That was a whole different... Era. Yeah. Like... Era is really, really shit. <laughs> mm hmm But some beautiful ones. Yeah. With Ring of Fire. I don't know if y'all niggas know about Ring of Fire or King's Cup, depending on where you're from. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, that. lots of, just a lot of liquor. So by the time y'all see this, I don't know, but yeah. we're filming this top of January, mm -hmm. new year, 2024. Mm -hmm. So if you could give Trey Melvin 2024 era a word, what would it be? So it, I think it's changing already as I literally sat on New Year's Eve going into New Year's with uh, two of my friends and we worked on decks for, you know, featured content, um, vision boards. We all did our vision boards and I cleared like 30 uh, megabytes of, uh, megabytes or gigabytes? Gigabytes mm -hmm. of storage off of my computer, you know, where literally our entire career lives. Yes. Um, and I realized actually literally last night, the thing that I'm working on now, it's not even on the vision board because it came like after it, but I'll give you two different ones. Okay. So there's two different, you know, um, the first one is what I originally planned. And in a nutshell, that is um, consistency as far as content. Cause you know, a bitch like me will pop in and pop out. Very I'll much. give you one cute little, in these days, fuck a Absent YouTube father. video. Absent. <laughs> Happy I'm birthday. Sick. And you're not getting child support. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Um, that's what it's giving. That's what it's giving. And it's not giving YouTube. You know, I'm finally getting into like TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. uh, reels and all that shit. Oh, and you're eating it up. I so old. Thank you're you. You're so annoying. I am, huh? Because it's like any platform you get on, it's like I get on a new platform. Oh, let me strategize. Let me figure out what I'm about to do. Trey can literally do anything. And the thing is like, you don't have to do the, sh the shit that you do. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to put in as much effort as mm -hmm. you do. Because you're at that level, yeah. and you're eating it up. But uh, but I do though. I have I do have to put in the effort. That's yeah. And I thought for a minute, honestly, and that's a conversation for another day, or later in the uh, in this episode. I thought that I didn't have to put in the effort, hmm. and uh, I've been humbled the past couple of years, <laughs> especially last year, especially with going back to school and everything that God, the Spirit showed me. Uh, he. Uh, was taught like I you know you have to put in the effort mm -hmm. um but honestly connecting at least from like the social media part of things TikTok Instagram reels all the short shit that we looked down on for the longest because bitch are you kidding like this is the type of shit one that we want to be doing mm -hmm. two coming up being at the forefront of social media at the forefront of digital creation and watching bitches make a six second Side off. You know how pissed a bitch like me was? Uh -huh. For the longest. And my teams were like, Trey, uh, but you gotta get hit. I'm like, no. I wanna write a whole episode. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking back like, wow, dumb. Mm -hmm. Dumb nigga. Well, you could have just been doing this. So I say that to say, I'm looking forward to consistency on those platforms and not just like popping in like an absentee father. <laughs> saying, I didn't mean to drag you. That was just, you know, observation. I mean, but it is giving. It was giving that. Um, but consistency to keep growing, you know, that, that engagement and take that into these back into these rooms with production companies, with managers, with um, agents, et cetera, getting new representation, rep representation mm -hmm. and um, packaging for television and packaging for film. That's one. Two. Okay. I'm going. So I went back to school last year in New York. I was at Juilliard for a semester. It was fucking phenomenal. Um, one thing that I learned, so one thing about me, I'm not here for the degree of anything. I could be, I could care the fuck less about that, um, but I do want to be the best. And by the best, I don't mean the best at what I do. I mean the best version of me in every single thing that I do. 
And social media took me away from the, the actor in me. I, I learned, I've been training literally my whole life acting and music. And when I turned 30, I said, huh, I've, I've made my mark and I'm gonna keep making my mark, but it's time to make the mark on where I wanna make it, film and television and get and reconnect and stage shit mm -hmm. and reconnect to my acting roots and, and my musical roots, which is why I went back to school. Um, but so, a gym that my professor, my theater, pro my drama professor gave me after the final was, Trey, everything that you're looking for in the classroom, I think you're looking for it subconsciously because you left school so early and mm -hmm. you started your career so early and, you know, got XYZ so early and now you're like trying to backpedal and you've already crossed that, that you've already, everything that you think you need to know, you already know it. Mm -hmm. What you, you need to it, do, lucky. you literally did it. Yeah. You've done it. You were hired. And I'm fucking weak. <laughs> like from the, like you, you've done it. And he said from the final alone, you proved yourself, you, you proved yourself in disgusting ways. What you need to do, it sounds like, is take your ass back to LA and work everything that you're looking for in a classroom. You're going to find on Netflix a set. You're going to find on HBO set, et cetera. You're not, you're going to find where, you know, we never stop learning as mm -hmm. artists, but you're going to find all of this working before you'll find it, you know, in a classroom. So I said, bet, you know, he affirmed me in ways that I never thought I needed. And I, <laughs> I said, you know, cool. I'll wrap this semester up. I'll go back to LA. Mm -hmm. Somehow I'm now auditioning for another school. <laughs> Girl. Uh-huh. But this time, so if I, in a perfect world, in a perfect world. I would do a semester of school, um, just learning drama, learning music at a different school, like everywhere, mm -hmm. a different school. All the schools I wanted to go to, you know, in high school and middle school and shit, growing up, um, just all around the country, around the, the world, et cetera. In, the beautiful, in a perfect world, I would do that. Um, but this program is an, is an actual like MFA program. And I don't care again about the degree, but the, Ah, uh, I, I don't want to say what the program is. You might have seen it on my story. I have. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it yet, but mm -hmm. it is the best in the country. Mm -hmm. um, you think Juilliard is great? She's wonderful, iconic, but this pro phenomenal. And they're very anti-racism first, anti-racism in the arts. An institution? Um, in, in this one. In America? In America, in this specific institution. Wow. Very, like the chair of acting is a black woman. Period. Yeah. And the, like literally, it's it's baked into their um, their curriculum. Like, oh baby, we're challenging racism <laughs> in the theater because mm -hmm. you know how they do us. Yes. So yeah, I just I, one of my classmates from Juilliard is also applying, and she's just lit a fire under my ass, and we're just doing it, running through the fire together. Hey. Yeah, that was very long winded, but um, that's what's going. Learning and growing. Two. Yeah. Is, it seems like the, is the vibe. It's definitely the vibe. Absolutely. So Ugh. what are you learning? So if you already know mm -hmm. everything you're learning in school, mm -hmm. what is it that school is giving you that you're taking into this year and next, next year and all your endeavors? There is, even preparing for my auditions for this school, there's a technicality to acting mm -hmm. that I have missed for a very long time that I've I studied when I was younger, but didn't study obviously on this level. And I, I want that. Mm. I want that. And obviously, you know, going to learn by working, X, Y, Z. But there's something about, and I really miss learning. Like I'm a nerd at my core, a nerd. I love school. Same. And I just left that motherfucker like deuces. I love it here. I <laughs> Fuck you. And then, and and, and, uh-uh. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I really just, I genuinely miss the classroom, um, especially being back in school last year. It just taught me just how much I miss it. And again, going back to the technical, even like into Shakespeare, into classical work, I have not looked at Shakespeare since, we didn't even look at it last year, or mm -hmm. yeah, last year in, in Juilliard. Um, but I haven't looked at it since fucking, since college the first time around. 
since high school. Went to performing arts high school. Haven't looked at it since then. So to be studying it again, to be preparing for it with this audition, it, it's lighting my heart on fire in ways that I, I won't find on set, mm. you know? I get that. Yeah. There's a, when you're an entrepreneur, you're creative, an mm. artist, there's no HR, there's no boss giving you, hey, let's do your yearly evaluations. Like it's up to you to make yourself better. Yeah. And I love that you are someone who accepts that responsibility mm -hmm. because I feel like the last couple of years I've noticed that like there is a responsibility in being a creative person and, mm -hmm. and making sure that you are in creative environments. Yeah. You need to be challenging yourself and the thing is, like, you could do none of this. You could just keep doing the same thing forever and hope that the, the gigs come, hope that the emails come. Yeah. But I think the more that you have a capacity for, mm -hmm. the better your skill set is, the more ideas can come, the bigger your ideas can get, mm -hmm. and the more fulfilling your, like, creative trajectory will be. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about that skill set for me. Mm -hmm. And I before I... Um, before I did Juilliard, I went back to, I, went, I did a, uh, uh, I, I worked with an acting studio here in LA. And that was like my return to school, but that was specifically rooted in audition technique. And it was phenomenal. Um, but I think the most, and I can't wait to go back. <laughs> Because again, we never stop learning as actors, as musicians, artists, etc. But the most important thing I took away from even that semester was the importance of having your toolbox. Going into a project, walking into any room with people and knowing what your strengths are, what your weaknesses mm -hmm. are, etc. Having that toolbox in every single classroom, every single project, etc. And taking this little thing, you know, away from it, putting your box this thing away, this thing away. Really 2024 is all about skill set for me. Period. I need this skill set through the roof. Not okay. just what I've taught myself, what I'm learning through life, but what I can learn, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Working and in, in school. Yeah, these are the things that are gonna get you paid mm -hmm. too. Okay. Like even as competitive as LA is, like there's always, there's everyone has a different value system. Yeah. Like, Ooh, let me not say names, but everyone has a different value system. And you see projects, you'll see uh, movies, television, whatever, and it's not great, but everyone's really pretty, you know? And so you can see kind of like what different spaces value most. And so being able to just like, well, I'm fine. I got muscles. I know what I'm doing. I'm skilled. I can write. Like, I commend it. I commend it. But let's go back. Uh huh. Let's go back, back. Let's go. When you blew up, mm -hmm. were you ready for that? Like, were you ready for all of the eyeballs? Were you ready for the opportunities? Like, did, did you have an awareness of how big you were? Yes and no. Um, Cause again, growing, like I know a lot of creators like fell into it you know, like just fall into when it comes to like having eyes and stuff on you. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I grew up on stage. I grew up um, in front of the camera, behind the camera. I did a lot of commercial work. I started doing commercial work when I was 11 or 12. You, you've seen some. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Yes. You've um, always been you. Yeah, mm -hmm. You have yeah, always been you. Never, never strayed from, from me, I fear. Um, so that's always been the goal. Like acting has always been music, et cetera, writing, producing, directing. That's always been the goal for me. And I, I spoke it, I really spoke it very young into existence. Like, child, I don't know what you hoes doing, mm -hmm. but I'm really trying to get this E guy. <laughs> um, and I thought about that recently too. Like, damn, niggas, you really, in, you manifested the fuck out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I said, you know, yes, from that standpoint, I've been speaking about it since the beginning. It's what I've, it's what I've wanted. The only thing that has changed is the why. Why do I want it? Mm -hmm. Why do I want eyes on me? What kind of impact do I want to leave, et cetera, before it came from a place of vanity and trauma, 
And now I understand like, oh, I actually have a lot to tell. I've got a lot of lives to change. There's a reason I did not die in that accident in 2020. God said, baby, you got work to do. Um, no, again, going back to the trauma. So I remember World Star was popping off back in the day. Oh my God. My baby. I World Star was that girl. And that girl was toxic. Um, it was very difficult. I was going viral on, on World Star every video, every week. And it was very difficult to read the comments. And mm. back then, I didn't realize until my, and I know we'll talk about 1,000 times, mm -hmm. my rollout for that, um, my last single. I didn't realize until then just how, like, like the, the role that uh, the public and their opinion, like the role that that's played on me and in my life. Because before it was a, a lot easier to say, well, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit about crying behind the scenes. Crying. Fuck me. Hate me. Um, yeah, it was very difficult to read, specifically the comments. Cause it, that wasn't the T on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, et cetera. Everyone spoke very highly of me. Mm -hmm. It was world star, though. The Nick was calling me all types of n and f and shit. Wow. And it got to a point where I actually reached out to them. And I, I really appreciate them for this because they did not have to do that. Um, but I reached out to them. I said, hey, can y'all stop posting my shit? Because I actually can't. Good Thank for you. you. Good for you. Thank you. Did they do it? They did. Okay. They, they said, we respect it. Absolutely. And they did not have to do that because I was bringing in shit for them. Views. Oh, yeah. I was clicking. <laughs> I'm fucking weak. Thank you. I was like, yeah. I'm <laughs> watching you. Um, yeah. That, I didn't realize again until the Die 1000 Times roll out from my last single how that really, because I really blocked it out. Mm -hmm. I really blocked it out back then. And now that I'm, I can sit with it and understand the impact. Yeah, I, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. I was ready for the praise and yeah. I got a lot of it. I'm very grateful for it, but it was difficult to see the praise a lot of times because of, you know, the fact that I'm an and I don't forget. Okay. Yeah. I mean, while those may be true, okay. while those may be true, mm -hmm. we could have used other language. You know, like what a what a what a great pink top that man has on. I think so. So you Hollister. already mentioned it, huh? Hollister top too. Ha Get, listen. You niggas don't know shit. You, because I remember, but this is before I met you. Mm -hmm. I would see your photos on like Tumblr and shit, mm -hmm. and it was always oh like during the phone. swag era. Uh huh. And just like that big ass hat with the with the polos flipped up. Mm -hmm. That's a great segue into this next question. Okay. As an almond skinned nigga with light eyes, <laughs> how tired do you think we are of you? Very. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You were fucking annoying. Because the um, thing is, I know that like, we talk about like people with blue eyes, right? And y'all deserve it, because <laughs> you're being crazy. Um, just walking around with your face like that. But like light skin or light eyed, black people are the blue eyes oh of the black community. I'm fucking, with, yes. Yes. And <laughs> my question is, so my follow up question to that is mm -hmm. like, be honest. Mm -hmm. When you take selfies, mm -hmm. do you highlight them? <laughs> like, are, are those the focal point when you take a picture? When you take a selfie, is it like, ooh, I'm about to eat them up with they this? They used to be. Okay. Absol they absolutely used to be. Um, now I'm at a place, I just love myself a lot, mm -hmm. and it's genuine. Mm -hmm. Not saying like, oh my God, I never have no, no I'm you know, still human, we have our days. Yeah, like, oh fuck, music. shit. But I love myself you know, now in ways that I really didn't before. It was a lot easier to fake. Um, and I know what I, I just, I know what I've been blessed with. I know what I bring to the table, et cetera. So no, they're not the, I just know, I mean, they're not these eyes. When I take a selfie, I love my selfies and you know, my people do too. Mm -hmm. These eyes aren't going anywhere. They're going to be cut. Yeah. It's going to like. And you have lashes too. And I forget that sometimes. Mm -hmm. I cut them off in elementary school because they were so feminine. And oh. I used to get bullied. When I tell you, y'all bullies really took our essence away. Like really, really tried to like you, take us out. Almost mad. did. A couple of times. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're jealous, you're mad, you're ugly, you can't dress, and you're you know musty, that. You're ashy. 
Need we say more? Because look at us under these hot fucking lights. Mm -hmm. Pretty. <laughs> and look at you. You see you. That's a read. <laughs> you, see, you see you without like having to say nothing else. Exactly. Because you, you know. You, you know. <laughs> you know I love a jaw drop. What is something that people are always getting wrong about you? Common misconception. Mm. That I'm a bitch. Hmm. I, think... I said, what do they get wrong about you? <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking interview is like, over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just on that note, um, no, honestly, that I'm a bitch. I think that I'm that I'm arrogant mm. and unapproachable. One, I'm a Scorpio. You see me in my all black, just chilling. Yeah. It's kind of like my natural essence. It's 3 p.m. <laughs> full leather, full leather outfit on. It's, in, it's my brand. Mm -hmm. Two, my resting bitch face is really like, it's something serious. It's something serious. And a lot of the, you know, the resting bitch face is trauma oriented, mm. you know, um, sometimes, sometimes I will, I grew up putting on my resting bitch face as like a, um, I guess as a mask, as a guard, mm -hmm. you know, to really let these niggas know I'm really not the one to be played with. And now I'm 31 and I still put it on, um, but it's just natural to me. It's, it doesn't necessarily come from that mm -hmm. place, you know? Like, Emoting. Mm-hmm. But the second that someone speaks to me, it completely different. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Very loving. Yeah. Very loving, very open, very, I'm a hugger, a kisser shit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think off of literally first glance, if you're just looking at me like walking in a club or some shit, it's getting all of it. Mm. It gets arrogant. And granted, I'm very confident. Mm -hmm. I am very confident and unconfident. But it never gave arrogance. It never gave I'm better than any of the hoes up in here. Um, yeah, I think naturally it's just, yeah, people assume that I'm a bitch. And I've heard that. Mm. They're like, I actually was so goddamn surprised because mm. you're literally the most loving person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> you are. Like, yeah. you are a sweetheart. So. People really don't know. It's Trey. I mean, I hope that one day you get to meet Trey, but if you don't, just know that it just wasn't in the cards for you. Yeah, that's okay. But sucks for you. Be blessed. Mm -hmm. Be blessed. And plus, you got the deep voice, too. Yeah, I'm over here flirting. I'm fucking weak. I like it. Keep going. <laughs> Your voice sounds like a Porsche underwater. Just growling. I'm here for it. Thank you. So you list yourself as a clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. When did you start experiencing this side of you? Birth. Okay. Literally birth. I didn't start honing it until I met Kathy. I met Kathy. Um, when we speak about Kathy, Kathy is my late best friend. Um, we were in a crash together in 2020 and she passed in it. I did not, clearly. Um, she... <laughs> When I met her, I met her at 20, I think. Yeah, I met her at 20. When we started getting close, um, I realized that her, she herself is, is clairvoyant. She's very empathetic. And she's Puerto Rican. Um, so her connection to her clairvoyance and the things that she's seen, she grew up in Puerto Rico, is uh, the veil was a lot lighter than it is growing up a black man in America, where clairvoyance and spirituality is very touchy and we've been stripped of everything mm -hmm. that our ancestors, right? <laughs> no. Um, so it wasn't until my early 20s when I started honing it, but I would sit back and think about the moments growing up that I knew, like, something's different here, something's off. I'm feeling all of you niggas, <laughs> all you bitches, all you animals. I used to cry throwing things. I hated throwing things away. Um, I have this very vivid memory of this apple core. I ate an apple and I'm like, what, six? I ate an apple 
and I'm looking at the core and I'm crying at her like, I'm so sorry. I don't want to throw you away, girl. But I, I fool, my mama gonna beat my ass. And my mother actually did beat my ass on a few occasions for crying over shit like that. Mm. Um, but I just think about my connection, like two things in general, I've always felt, you know, very deeply. And how, you know, being grown up black and queer, not openly queer at you know, that time, but how that um, stripped me, mm. you know, of so many things. And I'm so grateful to be able to reconnect to it now because so many people don't get the chance to. But yeah, I've, I've always known, didn't know what it was or what it looked like until my early 20s. I said, oh, that's what this is. How is that? How do you see that or use that for your spirit? What, do you, what is the language that you use for that connection? I just use clairvoyant empath these days. Okay. Yeah. So how does that aid you now in your life with that awareness? Honestly, I'm relearning what that looks like to me now. As while I was in New York for school last year, um, I wasn't in like, I wasn't in my home, you know what I mean? I didn't have my crystals and all of the regular regimen shit that I do, mm -hmm. you know, to cleanse my space, cleanse my energy. Um, hiking, I hike or was hiking like every day. That connection, didn't have that. Um, so I almost in a way, and I wasn't, I wasn't as anxious and I'm a very anxious person. I wasn't as anxious in New York. Nobody gives a fuck about like anybody. They barely give a fuck about themselves. And it was the most iconic thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, I was very depressed actually when I got back to LA. I was like, oh shit. Yo. LA is the opposite. The complete opposite. I was the complete so opposite. We care about too fucking much. Too much. Yeah. And, and I just, I was crying when I got back. Like, how have I lived here? My whole adulthood, what the fuck? Um, so I, I said that to say I didn't feel like I needed as much protection over there as I do over here. There's a lot, there's a lot more out to get you mm -hmm. here. Um, just, you know, spiritually, physically, et cetera. So I'm re I say that to say I'm relearning what it means to be a clairvoyant empath and how I use it, um, to help myself, to help my family, my friends, and to connect. And just just to listen, like to be guided, mm -hmm. allow myself to be guided, allow myself to to fucking listen. Because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't listening, you know? I spent so much time not listening and just listening to myself and to yeah. my ego. And It's you know, that ego. That fucking ego. That ego gone. She looks like you out. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it always feels like it's positive. Mm -hmm. Like it's always, oh. Listen, build yourself up. You're that girl. And I know like, your you Leo ass. I know it's your Leo ego. That that's something serious. You know what? I'll accept that. I've grown. Period. I was gonna I was gonna fight you at first. I'm fucking weak, I'm fucking weak. I was, but uh -huh. I accept that. And the gag is, you're actually one of the I've it, like experienced uh, you can you oh you can smell a Leo ego from a mile away. <laughs> And you might be like the, have the least that I've like known mm. since I've known you. Like have the least amount of ego, at least, you know, there's like good ego and bad ego. Yeah. The least amount of like toxic ego, at least from what I've experienced. Thank you. And I love that. Sometimes I forget that you're Leo. Cause it doesn't, I think like it feels ingenuine. Mm-hmm. So I don't even believe it. I'm fucking weak. So it's like when, when you know, I'm trying to think of the last time I had this kind of flare up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell a story, quick story. Mm -hmm. I told Jade in this story first time the other day. Jade's in the studio. <laughs> she helped put this whole uh, set together with the help of Brittany. Thank Shout you. out to the Viotter okay. for Marcus. Um, so my ex, uh, when we were finally like done, I found out through the grapevine that um, allegedly she was dating this like f friend of a friend, but not really a friend, mm -hmm. like someone I see out, but like we're not like close like that. But like if we see each other, hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. um, Do I know them? Hmm? Do I know them? You've probably seen them, but I don't know if you know them. Okay. 
Uh, so I found this out. I was like, what? They did Why didn't anybody tell me? Like, it's disrespectful. Like, you're supposed to tell me shit like that. Mm -hmm. And so I hit her up on, I hit her up on Instagram. I DM'd her. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Just like, when it was, was a lot. Hmm? When was this? This was years ago. This is okay. like 2018, maybe. Okay. Um, so I sent this fiery ass DM mm -hmm. and even when I was doing it, I was like, this ain't you. <laughs> Like while I was doing, I was like, mm. I feel goofy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I feel like I'm I'm doing a thing right now. And so fast forward like a couple months, I never actually got the confirmation if they were dating or not. It didn't really matter at that point. <laughs> but I go to this party and I see homegirl that I DM, uh -huh. and I was like, I need to eat this. And so I just went over there. I said, I'm sorry. That's if you're crazy. dating her, that's fine. Mm. That ain't got nothing to do with me. And mm -hmm. I have to do all that mm -hmm. in the DMs. And I felt really good after I did it. Yeah. And it was like, oh, this is what it means to like, just do right for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't like feeling rage. I don't mm -hmm. like feeling like I have to be somebody else yeah. to, to fit in a room. Yeah. I don't like that shit. Let's shit. get into some shit though. I'm weak. All right. So, <laughs> casually, this is just some shit, though. The streets are saying mm -hmm. that you died. I'm weak. This um, yeah. As part of the rollout for your single, Die 1000 Times, you, with the help of others, me and myself, uh, posted your obituary. And so I would love for you to explain the thought process behind this rollout. First of all, let me just say the single itself is, well, the first single from this upcoming record. Um, but it is. It just represents a rebirth. The way that I see death, especially meeting it in the face, and I, I, I wouldn't expect anyone who has not either had a near-death experience or died and come back, I would not have, I wouldn't expect anyone to understand it. Die 1000 Times was my, my way of trying to show people what it's like. Um, I address a lot of different things in the song addressed a lot of different things in the rollout. Um, one of them being the, the spiritual and religious rebirth. Um, just kind of denouncing like what I grew up, you know, as I grew up, grew up as a Baptist Christian, um, denouncing that and taking, Mm, taking accountability for like my role in it and also inviting in what I've learned over the years as far as, you know, African spirituality, et cetera, just the things that my ancestors practiced and what wasn't, you know, everything that was beat out of my ancestors and your ancestors mm -hmm. and the ancestors of everyone in this room. Um, shout out to shadow slavery. Um, we see you. I'm fucking weed. We love you. <laughs> Trick him, literally. <laughs> You're bad fucking annoying. I'm weak and can. Um, I said that to say my my relationship with death is very different, and just on a metaphorical, uh, from a metaphorical uh, standpoint, I don't see death as this horrible, like sad, disgusting thing, the way that everyone else, does. not everyone else does, but the way that many we, people do. Yeah. That's how know? it's told and taught to us. Yeah. It's this finite thing that happens mm -hmm. and it's big and it's sad. And it's so not, the, I, I literally die and like rebirth myself like every hour. <laughs> and I take great pride in it because um, I just never like being the same. Mm -hmm. I'm always big on growth and my, like I said, my relationship to death is just different. So when I sat down with um, my team and we were planning that rollout, um, I remember, uh, I wish I could, it's so hard to explain because I don't expect you know people to get it, but I guess that's not my responsibility. I remember looking at Kathy's obituary and there was something in my spirit. <laughs> there was something, something spoke to me and said, what would 
Trey, you were supposed to die in that crash, and I don't think people really understand that. I've spoken about it, you know, very, I want to say to the best of my ability, but also not to the best of my ability, very vaguely. Exactly. You know, obviously one of the most traumatic things that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. I'm still subconsciously trying to wrap my mind around a lot of what happened. Um, but I was supposed to die in that crash right next to my girl. And while I'm looking at Kathy's, thinking about how we were both supposed to have funerals that day, I'm thinking, what would your obituary have looked like? What would people have said about you? You know, that they didn't say while you were here. Mm -hmm. And Spirit State, make one. <laughs> Put in it, obviously. Give the girls a website because I wanted to. I gave the girls an experience. That was Spirit say, get on Photoshop. <laughs> Let us cook through you. <laughs> that ass. That, hey, let us cook through you. That I said, say less. <laughs> you know, I ain't getting shit. Um, but I put the website on the obituary because I wanted people to follow the journey of the, the from the obituary release to the funeral to the procession to all that shit like the that whole weekend week etc was a really beautiful honestly really fun experience to like piece together and i just remember presenting that to my team and saying okay just so you know these are just gonna be mad God said it. <laughs> God said. Spirit said. Ancestor said. Kathy said. Oh, these girls are going to be pissed at you. But that's not your responsibility. I'm <laughs> Upload. It's not your responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is your story to tell. Um, and honestly, what pisses the girls off, people, let me give, let y'all in a little secret. What pisses the girls off is what gets the clicks. Um, so yeah, I... We, you know, I made it obviously a family affair. Had all of my family and friends, you included. Pulled up. Uh, you know, posting the obituary. And my number one thought is, I didn't, I didn't realize until that rollout how, I don't know if I should say this, but I will, how stupid people are. Um, my number one thought is, oh, the girls are going to go to the website and they're going to understand what the process is. I thought, honestly, before releasing, I knew the girls were going to be mad, or some of the girls, but I didn't know... I didn't know how little people care about me. For the longest, I really genuinely thought, especially at least my core audience, because that's really what matters at the end of the day, mm -hmm. care about me and all facets of me. Like we spoke about earlier, I've been very vocal from the beginning of my career about expressing all facets of me, not just the fucking comedy, not mm -hmm. just the Water Malone Drea videos, but also, uh, what was the short film? Amber talks to me about it all the time, and I love it. Uh, to, to, tomorrow is too late. This little, uh, this dramatic sketch that I put out years ago that helped me like work through my ex, my relationship, my first relationship with a man. Um, that sketch like was one of my first dramatic pieces. Um, I've been all around the fucking block with the facets of me. And I thought before releasing that, like people get it. Did you, you think know? that they, like they know you, mm -hmm. like they know that there's, that this is a part of a master plan. My mm -hmm. audience, they got me in that way. That's what yeah. you're thinking. Yeah, that's, and that's all that matters. That's, mm -hmm. I just want them to follow it with me. And I didn't realize until that, that rollout, like, oh, Oh, y'all, we're in a different era of, of media, of digital media, media in general, digital, mm -hmm. traditional, et cetera. We're in a different era. Oh, y'all like to be mad for fun. Y'all don't like to read anymore. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Um, so I only knew what the response was from my friends and my family. And I also didn't realize until that rollout just how much my, like, my essence, um, my Trey Melvin-ness, et cetera, 
just how much it has impacted my friends and family over the years, because obviously not only are people mad at me now, but they're mad at the people around me for even posting the obituary, even though all of my friends and family mm -hmm. get it. You know what's crazy though? Mm -hmm. Like being in that part of it. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is because I wasn't thinking past my relationship with you. Yeah. This, it just felt very on brand. Uh -huh. And so maybe I'm, I'm, I'm blinking myself to like the people that like get it. Mm -hmm. And the same way that like Doja Cat has people that get her. Mm -hmm. And when she does some weird dumb shit, mm -hmm. whether it be genuine or ingenuine or a gag or just doing some shit for, for X, whatever, mm -hmm. like, she knows that there's like a core group of people who are going to understand her. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very hard to, I want to say it's hard to do that on the internet. Yeah. It's just difficult because what people see on the internet is the full story. Yeah. It's everything is true or everything is a lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's no nuance. And it was a gamble. If anything, like I said, I learned so much from the rollout about myself, about my history, about um, the World Star days, when it took me back to the World Star days and made me rethink about like, why the fuck did I have World Star take my shit off? Because I could, obviously at that time, I couldn't handle the negativity. Mm. I'm looking back now like, uh, please actually be pissed. I'll be share pissed. it. I'm weak. <laughs> Repose. Be, please, please. That, the message remains the same. A week after the roll, not after the rollout, but well, yeah, the first, within the first week of the rollout, I don't look at, I've never been one to look at numbers. I've never been, what the fuck I gotta look at numbers for? You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like deadass, I've never been one to check my analytics. The teams I've worked with and shit, they're always like, well, you need to know the XYZ engagement rates and all that. I don't care. What if it's like, nigga, what I, I said what I said, however, Terrell said this, uh, Terrell Gray, shout out to you. A lot of the times, you know, the girls are subconscious about the content that they put out if it doesn't hit a certain, um, you know, a certain number, um, when they're used to, you know, certain numbers. And the gag is the shit that hits fewer people, that's more impactful. Or the few people that saw it, they needed it. <laughs> the whole world may not have needed it, mm -hmm. but they needed it. Um, so yeah, I've never been one to look at numbers, but God said, look at your numbers. Specifically, not on YouTube, because fuck her, um, but on your website. Because that was the biggest lesson, I think, that I learned around that time when it, from a business perspective. This is all about Trey Melvin branding now. The social, the, the social platforms, they need me. Mm -hmm. They need you. Mm -hmm. We don't need them. What we need to do, and we had this conversation a minute ago about that, the importance of branding and then owning your brand outside of this shit. A uh, guy said, look at your uh, trainmelvin.org. I had half a million clicks on the website. Nobody would know that because you're just seeing, obviously, the tweets and the Instagram and, and um, exactly. Even the YouTube, you know, YouTube views on the video, on the music, etc. But there were half a million people on the website within, I don't know if it was four or seven days. And I was taken aback from that because I'm used to that on the platforms where it any, you know, can reach anybody. But to sit back and see like on my platform mm -hmm. that this many people came, all you bitches see is bitches cussing me out in the comments. <laughs> but this many people can't, this many people do care. Whether they're mad or happy, this many people care. That taught me a lot. And it's, it really was God in my ear like, You've been relying on these platforms a little too much, girly pop. Mm -hmm. A little too we much. We can get into that. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Later. Okay, you did. This is why I was at his house at 6 o'clock in the morning. This right here. Yeah, actually. No, but dead ass, though. Fair. Literally, like, sharing life stories and all that. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you're here with us. Thank you. I'm here. I'm happy to hear how your feelings have changed. Well, actually, I actually don't know how, what the, what your original feelings around it were, yeah. but I know that like a lot of people don't make it out of this. They don't make it past like owning their own original perspective on perception. Mm -hmm. It's oh shit, I'm getting canceled. Mm -hmm. Even though we we all know like that doesn't exist. 
It's not real. We love a sickening rebrand. Yeah. It's just... We both study marketing, right? You study marketing. Sorry, what? In school. You study marketing in school? I sure did. Yeah. I studied marketing my first time around in school. Yeah. I'm a, I lo- it makes me calm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love a sickening rebrand. Yes. And the girls just... A pivot. Don't know that part yes. of it. Yes. Like, Strategy. Baby. Strategy. I you can it. make it... I don't want to... Listen. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their own journey. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their own lane. Yeah. You can study, like I'm studying like Issa Rae, I'm studying mm-hmm. Pharrell, I'm mm-hmm. studying these people who have created these worlds for themselves where they can do whatever, not whatever they want, mm-hmm. but like yeah. create the art that they want to create mm-hmm. and it all makes sense in their yeah. world. And even though I'm looking at them, I have to understand that like my path will most likely look different. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't look like theirs, it doesn't mean that mine's not successful. Yeah. Um, I feel like social media, as great as it is for exposure, as great as it is for getting things out, meeting people, community, Mm -hmm. um, philanthropy, like there's so many touch points where it is good. Mm -hmm. I think the most damaging thing about it is that it eradicates the desire to have an original opinion because you want to please everyone Mm -hmm. with everything that you post. And the reality is intentions, no one knows your intentions. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, (laughs) paint something, make a song, whatever, make them like Jordan Peele, for example. Like Jordan Peele could be fucking around for all we know. (laughs) It could be. We are watching Get Out and, and Us and like all these other movies like 12, 14 times. Oh, this little egg, this little egg. Oh, I missed that. He could have just, oh yeah. Like it could have been anything, you know? Yeah, and I so was just high. literally, I was just like, oh, I just thought that shit was cute. Like, <laughs> but we have added our own, you know, purpose to to all the things that we that we take in. And mm-hmm. social media is so interesting in yeah. that way because you're always like trying to find that balance of showing up. Because the the other part of marketing is that you need people. Mm-hmm. You just do. Yeah. Like even someone like a Beyonce. She needs people. Mm -hmm. The reason why she was able to dump all that money back into the economy Mm -hmm. is because of us. Yeah. Literally, I I wish I had a Beyonce, like, 2023 wrapped. Like, based on, like, how much money I spent on this woman. Me too. Like... And how little she gave back to me. Because I still ain't got no fucking vision. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. Man, that film... Yeah, just the film alone. Yeah. Maybe? It, yes. Phenomenal. So, you have posted many a nude online. No one had asked, uh, fully unprompted, at any time of the day or night. So, I have to ask, have you ever in- entertained the idea of making spicy content? Define spicy content. With your dick and balls out. <laughs> With your dick and balls out. I do. You do make spicy content. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is this yeah. on the, the part of the website we haven't seen? This is, yes. Yes, she's not in the directory of the website, but I have a whole Twitter. And honestly, by this. <laughs> and honestly, I love it. Like it's like an address. Hey, folks. Dick and balls. <laughs> and ass. And ass. Um, by the time this comes out, it might be gone. Because I was actually just talking to God about this last night. Literally before bed. Um, yeah, I have a whole Twitter. I've had one for, where are we now, January? We're about to say, where are we, 24? It might be three years. Two. Is I'm it weak, public? right. It's public, but I, I you know, I, everybody obviously doesn't know about it. Okay. Yeah. I've only retweeted a thing or two on my main Twitter every now and then, but... Is your face in it? Yes. So I've got the whole Twitter, and that's, you know, that's how people know about the... It's a... I call it my nude museum. So I have a curated, like, museum on my website with different exhibits of, uh, of, of, yeah, of me nude. I actually really love it. Clearly. Like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We used to be in a group chat, and there was one moment we're just sharing nudes. Like literally, Trey would start it and then someone else and then someone else and then someone else and then me and then someone else, like. A time. 
Yes. I'm trying to think about the last one. I think I was living in Orlando at, the, at that time as I took like my little Orlando hiatus. Mm -hmm. And I feel, I remember, oh, I remember <laughs> uh, saying some, or taking some picture and putting in the group chat. And you said some funny shit. I can't remember what the fuck it was. But yeah, I think that was what, 2019? Yeah. Yeah. Wild time. Yeah. What is it about, what is it about, is it just for you? Is it kind mm -hmm. of like a, let me honor my body, because I look good right now. Yes, that's where it started. Like, I want to, and I want to say when I started releasing the content, um, this might have been right before, right before I like, started prioritizing my fitness and, and my health. Mm -hmm. um, so even that's been a really beautiful thing to like watch the trajectory of the exhibits and see how my body has changed. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately I'm just a Scorpio and freaky mm. and disgusting. Let's talk about this. Let's so, talk about it. Uh, these fucking cars, I feel so powerful. I'm weird, you should. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I'm weird. <laughs> so like, mm -hmm. introduce me to the Scorpio mystique mm -hmm. because this is from, this is what I know about Scorpios. Okay. I know that y'all love the darkness. Yeah. Um, I know that you guys tend to be very good with words. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard, I don't have any any personal experience physically with a Scorpio mm -hmm. uh, to like really understand the freaky side of that. But just let me, let me in to what, to really what who Scorpios are. On the sexual side of things. Sexual side of things, but also just like, what, what do people get wrong? Or like, what is like, when I'm saying that there's like a mystique and a mysterious and a darkness there, like, is that just scratching the surface? Like, is there more to y'all? Like, what is? There is. And I think the number one thing is secrecy and it, mis mystery in general. Mm -hmm. And the gag is, I don't think that we're so much mysterious as we are quiet, hmm. unless we feel comfortable, unless spoken to. We're not really ones to, to sp like speak just to hear ourselves speak. Um, so if the conversation has like value and, and depth, et cetera, then okay, we can get into this. Okay. If not, yeah, no. We're also very good at beating around the bush. Um, so we can, for example, even this interview, I've probably spoken a lot and said nothing at all. We're very good at that. Mm. Like not letting people in or penetrate too much. Um, <laughs> I, I'm very big, especially just with emotional maturity and intelligence, learning that. Um, at understanding like the difference between an emotionally intelligent Scorpio and an emotionally unintelligent Scorpio. Because mm -hmm. um, I used to ride obviously all day and still do, all day and all night for my people, for my sign. But I do understand with understanding my past and where I've come from. I do understand how I could have been the devil. <laughs> It was I. It was I. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the problem. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> hey, I'm the problem. Uh, hey, um, it is me. And I think a lot of people have who have dealt with Scorpio, you either love us or you hate us. There are people who are just naturally compatible with us who are like, oh my God, I love me a Scorpio. And people who are not. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they're literally like the, the, the pinnacle of hell. Um, and when you are emotionally unintelligent, emotionally uh, immature, you don't, you just don't understand your emotions and how they affect both yourself and other people. You can be, you know, we can, we can be manipulative, mm -hmm. again, secretive, um, uh, just emotionally unstable in general. Cause we act so we're, we're, y'all be if the idea happens at 8 p.m., we're acting on it 8.02. Now. Right now. The corporate Aaron. She said, all right, it's 9.01, let's get a... Yeah, we're gonna do it right now. <laughs> it's 9.01, we're just gonna go ahead and start at... Um... <laughs> it's giving very much so that. Yes. So yes. Now, mm -hmm. right now. Leos are like that too. Y'all are, and that's why, we, uh, that's why I stand. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other girls can't really, you know, fuck with it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the sex, the sex side, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, we're discussing. We're just really like all we're talking. <laughs> No, we're just fucking gross. No, we're just fucking gross. Like, always horny, um, very adventurous. And I'm a Sag Moon, too, so that, like, adds on to the adventure. Adventure is, like, you know, one of Sag's biggest yes. traits. Mm -hmm. um, constant change. Constantly. Love to switch it up. Um, ultimately, you know, I, I know I just spoke, you know, talking shit about my babies, and I love, you know, my Scorpio babies gonna ride to the death. But we're water signs. People don't know that. A lot of people think we're fire. And we are psychic to the T, intuitive to the T, whether we see it or not, feel it or not, et cetera. We're acting off a lot of shit and mm -hmm. don't even, specifically if you're emotionally unintelligent, don't understand why we're acting on it. But the gag is you're like getting a vision. <laughs> um, I, when it comes to like sex, I'm very intuitive with what like, I desire and what my partner partners desire. Mm -hmm. um, from you or in general? From in general. Okay. So either desire from me or desire themselves or or can't really speak up and because sex in general is so it's yeah. scary territory, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and now that I'm understanding myself sexually, I didn't realize how sexually stunted I was um, thanks to you know growing up black and queer and not understanding that I was black and queer mm -hmm. and being, I don't want to say robbed, but robbed <laughs> of the experiences that our heterosexual counterparts, you know, have, mm -hmm. have, you know, dipping in and out. Got to, exactly. A lot of us, especially black queer men, we don't, we don't see that until the thirties. Yeah. Until our thirties, you know, late twenties, et cetera. And, I didn't realize, like, for the longest, I was having sex, and because I, I had a lot, a lot of sex, having sex and not understanding like what I needed out of it, what I wanted from it, what I deserved. You know, there's a lot of things growing up that I didn't think that I deserved. Um, so yeah, now that I'm in tune with with that, and in tune with my partners, it's just really like everything is possible. Mm -hmm. And sex, I, I also don't see. I don't see sex and especially the naked body as taboo as people do. So even the nudes that I've posted, et cetera, my museum, yes, it's pornographic, you know, content. <laughs> it's porn. <laughs> it's yes. damn porn. <laughs> but it's more than, especially being an artist, mm -hmm. it's more than that to me. It means it's, it's, so, it's so much more than that to me. Yeah. You know, and I, I just look good naked and I like looking good That's naked. Cool. A lot of times I'll take nudes and I'll be like, damn, I want the world to see this. Ain't no <laughs> way only I can see it, you know? And I got no nigga. Mm -hmm. I got no bitch. You just don't give me a heart. I, like, no... I need some comments. No, I get it. I get that. Please, you I have a praise it. kink. You I just found this out. I have a praise kink. I love that you know that. Yeah. I love that you know that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I do, but I've learned about that within the last six months. Yeah. And now I want to understand that better. Yeah, you should. Because maybe I do. That's great. <laughs> I gotta say, I have to say. I love, I, I'm very talkative and I didn't understand how to be talkative before. You're very, okay, wait. Are you very talkative mm -hmm. or are you vocal? I don't want to say talkative, I, I was vocal. Okay. Communicative. Mm hmm like, yes, I like that, or move to the left. I'm fucking weak, yes. Okay. And New York actually taught me I had a lot of sex. That? <laughs> actually don't have as much sex in LA because like, these, these motherfuckers. Y'all don't have coke. Ain't no shades of coke. The coke, the K. Y'all wanted a lot. Poppers. Pop, y'all love y'all fucking poppers. I just, y'all are Poppers are popping. Poppers are goddamn popping. You can buy poppers at like 7 Eleven here. Can you? I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I would, I'm not a pop, I hate poppers. They make my head hurt. Mm -hmm. I get dizzy and hot and shit. I know it's supposed to do that, mm -hmm. but I'll be ready to pass out. Yeah. I can see while you're mm -hmm. taking dick, mm -hmm. why you might need a little mm -hmm. distraction. Right. But if you're throwing it, as I do, <laughs> um, I just. <laughs> it's just easy. Couldn't be me.
Mm. But I, I do understand how the other girls can do it. So I would not say that to say I wouldn't yeah. even understand yeah. the 7-Eleven trip mm -hmm. for that. Listen, I've just, I've been to WeHo a lot. Mm -hmm. And I've heard stories. I've Apparently there's a gym. So just to sweeten the deal, if you decide to book time at Beach Your Studios. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a story, a few stories about a gym. I don't know what, what type of, or what, maybe it's best that I don't say what the brand <laughs> before they get this shit taken down. Might be. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a gym, and apparently it's a popular, like, cruising gym. This is Where a lot of, like, gay men go, and... Is it a popular, like, a chain? But at this specific location, it's maybe? This specific, this specific gym location. I think it's it's near, close to here. Uh -huh. Close to WeHo. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of gay men frequent mm -hmm. that gym, mm -hmm. specifically for sex. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I haven't done any cruising. It makes me it, it, very jealous. Mm. Very jealous. Cruising is basically... What, what is cruising? Is it... Searching for... For butt! <laughs> <laughs> for butt! <laughs> I'm gonna get a little throw action out in here. Yeah, searching yeah. for butt, for throat, for... Is that, so I it's, haven't... It's, it's specifically for sex. Like, for it's that. not just like, oh, hey, we're having a good time with a I nice wanna, person. No, cruising, I'm trying to bust a nut. Got it. Have sex, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't just be doing it just to do it. Do it with intention. Do it with intention. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you wanna have sex and it's consensual, go, go at it, mm -hmm. do your thing. But one thing that I do regret is doing it just because it sounded and looked cool mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Because that is sex that I don't think back on and I'm like, ah, oh, mm, mm -hmm. that was the stuff. No, mm -hmm. it's the sex that I was intentional about where the floor, foreplay was a part of the deal. Mm -hmm. And those are the times that I, most of them is with Jada, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's like most of the, most of them, <laughs> Jada just snapped her fingers. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, just, just, you know, be aware of yourselves and, yeah. you know, yeah. take care of yourselves. Shout out to sex. Shout out to sex. Shout out to sex. Consensual. Mm -hmm. One must go, oral, butt, or phone space. Phone. The fuck I wanna, I'm not hopping on no phone with Nan, nigga. All right. Nigga, if you don't come over. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't come over. Listen, what uh, gay men don't do long distance relationships. Mm -mm. Lesbians be like, oh, <laughs> how's, it, how's it over there in, in Iceland? Oh, well, you know, it's pretty Gucci over here in Georgia. Like, I'm showing them panties, like. <laughs> I'm weak, and the guy, I, you, in my early 20s, I would, I would do a long, not long distance relationship, mm -hmm. but communicate, or not communicate. Oh. What is it? In, entertain shit. Yes. No phone sex. Okay. Not that. I don't, I ain't done that since high school. I don't want that. What about like a sexy, like, uh, texting, like a back and forth? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Now that I can get into. But even these, I'm 31 and I feel, which is so young, but I, I've really, this is annoying me. No, let's I take realize. your time. <laughs> take your time. This is for you. I barely even like that. Mm. I barely even like that. Niggas be asking for shit. And I be getting annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't come over here. If you don't bring take your these ass over off. here. Oh. <laughs> um, before we get into the game, mm -hmm. last question. What can we expect from you? What's coming up? that you can tell us about um, to give the girlies a little something to munch on to other than your spicy mm. Twitter. Because <laughs> there's munching over there as well. There is. Um, a lot. A lot. There aren't any specific projects other than the album that's mm -hmm. coming up, which, God willing, actually have some really great features on them that I didn't have planned before. It was supposed to just be me. And then I connected with um, a specific artist last year and that like changed my outlook completely on how I, for the longest, my, my imposter syndrome has been like through the roof. <laughs> and I can only see myself in, yeah. uh, we spoke on this, um, I can only see myself 
not only see myself, but it was hard to see myself out of outside of the digital space. Mm -hmm. And at, at, in relation to projects, working with people, et cetera. Um, and now I do. <laughs> and I understand my gifts. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to hear it from people in the industry who are doing big things, who have been doing it for a minute. Um, this relationship specifically opened my eyes to a lot. And yeah, we've got some cute little stuff coming on the record. But if I don't end up in school, in a grad program for three years, um, I'm really excited to get this new production, not get it off the ground, because I've started at my production company, but elevate it and yes. take it to the next level. And I've met some really cool people who I, I look forward to working with on that. I'm excited and for And bringing you. the girls content, thank you. Yeah. And not like content content, but like more, mm -hmm. so, something closer to television and film. Yeah. Some more web series, more short films, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All that good shit. Let me get a, a skit on the album. You said a skit on the album? Yeah. You know how they used to do like little skits on the albums and stuff? I'm fucking weak. You just... And you know, I love I love an interlude. I like how I'm like, let me get a skit on the album. She was like, I love an interlude. <laughs> it's like the whole album is about like trauma, darkness. And I'm like, nigga, what's going on? In the middle of the album, I'm like, I'm not the target. It's fine. I'm fucking weak. It's okay. Um, I don't. There's not any skits. There's voice notes. Okay, you. Let's end on this because Trey loves a voice note. I do. Trey, one minute, two minutes, seven seconds. It doesn't seven matter. Minutes. You could be laid up in bed with nothing but time. You're sending a voice note. <laughs> you will never see, you will never see letters. No. It's just saved audio clips. You know, I'm sorry. I is this strategy? It. You said what? Is this strategy? You said this is strategy? Yeah, so then like other people, like other artists can use your voice, voice notes in I'm their projects. Weak. Imagine, I've never thought about that a day in my life. But honestly, but that's kind of mind. iconic. Who but knows, really we can pivot, we can rebrand. They can. We can. We can. Alrighty. I just I'm don't play a game with you. Ever. What the fuck is tea? Okay. What's this fucking game? Well, before I, we get into the game, actually, mm -hmm. I have this bottle of champagne here. Now, is this what I think it is? Can well, you it's Prosecco. Oh. Do you like Prosecco? I'm not a wine bitch in general. Is Prosecco Why did that wine? Just, yeah. Ain't it? I don't know. Prosecco is wine. I just drink it. I'm weak. Ugh. So are you going to have a little bit, though? I will, just because I'm here. You know, I'm on a no drinking. Like, I've cut out drinking as of this past weekend. But I'll take a sip. Okay. Or two. Also, no pressure. Then I, I have finished this bottle multiple times by myself. I won't do it. Okay. All right. I've got a. I've got monologues to work on when I leave here. And I love that for you. Yeah. Well, you can still Thank join you. me in celebration of being the first guest. I will do that. Of the Jade Fox show. That's iconic. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Woo! Pour a little water in your cup or something. Okay. Yeah, because it do feel no, a little. It's like... You're right. Joint. Okay. All right. But this was, I was going to say this was a long time coming, but it's kind of not. Mm -hmm. This happened very quickly, I feel, because one thing that we talked on earlier is like, when a Scorpio or a Leo wants to do something, it's happening. fucking happening. Yeah. And here we are in this set that we built today mm -hmm. in Be True Studios with my good friend, and I'm so happy. Like the fact that you were the first person, because baby, I have other guests booked. And we can't wait to fuck. And we can't wait. Just fuck me. Period. Um, knowing that you were gonna be the first one, I felt um, a bit more relaxed. Good. Like good. this is a lot for me. Like the imposter syndrome you were talking about, just mm -hmm. like the emails I've been having to send lately and just all of the shit, it's a lot, but I'm happy to share this space with you. Thank you for sharing it with me. I'm so fucking proud of you. Thank you, friend. This is phenomenal. I can't wait to see where, I mean, just where you're starting out. It's like, uh, <laughs> I love to see us in studio spaces in general, because, you know, we used to working out our bedrooms. But this is, I can't wait to see where it goes. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. To elevation. To fucking elevation. So sorry about it. We had to cut the game. You guys, this is the thing. When you are doing a production and it's the first one of its kind that you've done, there's gonna be some kinks that you gotta work out, all right? And unfortunately, 
We had to cut the game, but the game is on Patreon. The reason why we have to cut the game is because Trey, ugh, love him. We got into the darkness. We got into public perception, social media, artistry, um, your toolbox, skill sets, all of that. But we also, it was Trey Melvin who has a very sharp tongue. And uh, yeah, I'm not getting canceled. Fuck no. Why would I do that? A black woman, me, jeopardize my future? Fuck that. So go on over to Patreon, baby. And you can see everything that we, unfortunately, we had to get, we had to cut it out. We had to cut it out. Um, but also on Patreon, you'll see all the outtakes from this episode as well. Couple extras. And it's a great way to support the show. If you want to see the future of The Jade Fox Show, if you want to invest in the future of The Jade Fox Show, you want our guests to be treated well, you want them to have their snacks and beverages on hand, go ahead and hop on over to Patreon. Uh, a lot of cute stuff going on over there. And it not only supports me, but it also supports the people that help pull this show together. So we appreciate you. We love you. But yeah, I'm not about to ruin my bag. <laughs> I'm not about to do that. So go on over to Patreon. We'll see you over there. And thank you for watching. Bye.